Goku, Superman, Titans of Power, Champions of Unimaginable Might, endlessly requested to fight each other again. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, Superman entered the world on the cover of Action Comics No. 1 in 1938. He was the first, and his success paved the way for the superhero genre. The Man of Steel is righteous, courageous, selfless, a perfect Boy Scout. Very inspirational, but man does it get boring sometimes. Siegel and Schuster were the sons of Jewish American immigrants, and knew firsthand what it was like living in a world where they felt alien. Thus, this became the basis of Superman's story. You know how it goes, his scientist dad found out his homeworld Krypton was getting a bit too explosive and sent his son off to Earth to save him. On Earth, Superman's Kryptonian cells can absorb solar radiation from the yellow sun, giving him awesome strength, speed, durability, flight, and the power to shoot heat from his eyes, which can be large enough to vaporize a planet or precise enough to perform lobotomies. Superman was so powerful he could carry entire solar systems on his back or obliterate them with a sneeze. But over 75 years, Superman has changed quite a bit, including going through two separate reboots which we will be focusing on today. These reboots lessened his insane power, not exactly by altering his abilities, but by changing his outlook. Upon discovering his alien powers, the new Superman rejected them, unintentionally instilling mental barriers on his powers which he would work to unlock through the rest of his life. Sort of like when you drink too much and don't remember the night before, so you gotta spend all day figuring out how you got yourself a dozen kangaroos and married a lamp. Don't ask. And then, in 1996, the world changed. Dragon Ball Z came to America. Dragon, Dragon, Rock the Dragon, Dragon Ball Z! Twelve years prior, a mangaka, or author of Japanese comics, named Akira Toriyama introduced Dragon Ball, the story of Son Goku and his quest to become the greatest martial artist in the world, nay, the universe. Like Superman, Goku was also sent to Earth from a doomed planet and possessed incredible powers. But that's pretty much where their similarities end. Goku was primarily inspired by the Monkey King's son Wukong from the Chinese novel Journey to the West. If you have any interest in Asian culture, I highly recommend reading it. It's inspired far more than just Dragon Ball. Throw a stone at a shelf of anime, and odds are it hits something inspired by Journey to the West. Anyway, Toriyama was smart and knew that fighting is awesome, so Dragon Ball took off like a rugged. Sooner than you can say power levels are bullshit, Dragon Ball became a hit anime and then came to America. Literally making its own journey to the West. <laughs> and forever changing the childhoods of many. Dragon Ball Z became the gateway anime to many Westerners. However, since prior anime had very little success overseas due to the differences between Japanese and American cultures, the companies responsible for importing DBZ understandably feared Goku's character might seem a bit selfish and heartless to a Western audience. Their solution? Turn Goku into Superman. This decision resulted in some strange mistranslations, such as labeling Goku's father as a brilliant scientist. Yeah, I don't see it. As well as perhaps Goku's most famous line, which many argue actually conflicts with his true character. I am the hope of the universe. I am protector of the innocent. I am the light in the darkness. I am truth. Ally to good, nightmare to you. 
And this is where it all began. The nerd debates, the internet wars, East versus West, which hometown hero would triumph in a brutal fight to the end? In 2002, Wizards Magazine delivered an answer. They deduced Goku would win, stating that Superman would die to a fall from the moon to the Earth. A decade later, the website Outskirts Battledome launched, dedicated to answering versus matches. This time, Superman claimed victory. However, the chaotic debate careened out of control and eventually became banned forever. The arguments only grew. The internet needed a solid answer. That's where we came in. Since January 2012, Goku and Superman have continued their adventures. Superman gained an all-new ability called the Super Flare, which jettisons all the solar energy stored in his body, essentially turning him into a solar bomb. However, it leaves him completely drained of his powers for the next 24 hours. As such, he will only use the Super Flare as an ultimate last resort. Goku attained a new legendary form called Super Saiyan God. Despite being a temporary boost, Goku's body absorbed the godly power, essentially making it his new base form. Then, after mixing its power with his Super Saiyan ability, he became a Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan! Oh, come on! There had to have been a better name. Ultra Saiyan, Master Saiyan, Super Ultra, combo with Fry Saiyan, anything but that mouthful! These new powers have naturally rekindled the ultimate debate. Is this godly Goku powerful enough to defeat Superman? Or will this just be a repeat of the past? Well, let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for the rematch of Legends. It's time for a death battle! Hey, Superman! Son Goku, I've been expecting you. Ready for a rematch? with that kind of power. Blue hair? <laughs> I've seen worse. Yeah! yeah! 
had your fun? I would prefer we don't accidentally destroy the Earth a second time. No, I will never back down from a fight. I believe this is the part where I say, I told you so. But King Kai, I don't understand. You can't beat him. Sure I can. I'll just train harder than ever. No, Goku. You can overcome any limit put in front of you, but his power has no limit. Even if you somehow found the power to surpass him, you wouldn't have anything left to aspire to. Do you truly want that? Nah, sounds boring. Oops. <laughs> uh, King Kai, do you have anything to eat? Goku, I'm trying to be serious here. What? My stomach has limits too, you know. <laughs> K.O. Whoa! Torches and pitchforks down. Before you start raging, please hear us out on this one, all right? Goku is incredibly powerful, a skilled warrior, and a great character. But Superman is on a completely different level, one which really doesn't belong in versus matches like these. Sure, due to the writing style of Dragon Ball, Super Saiyan God Goku's exact limits are difficult to pinpoint. Also, Goku will likely achieve a new form in the future, it's just how Dragon Ball works nowadays. However, none of that is really a factor. Goku will always have limits, while Superman's maximum potential is limitless. Don't believe us? Well, strap in, boys and girls. Let's look at how Superman breaks reality. One day, Superman was hanging out near Vega, the brightest star in the Lyra constellation. For the record, that's 25 light years from Earth, or 147 trillion miles. Naturally, a crisis occurred on Earth, so Superman's photographer buddy Jimmy activated his signal watch, calling for Superman's aid. And Superman arrived in a matter of minutes! Being a comic book, the time Superman took getting to Earth is unspecified. However, the comic never mentioned or implied any large time lapse, and he arrived as the battle was ending. Even if we seriously lowballed this feat to taking 10 minutes, Superman would be traveling over 800 trillion miles per hour, over a million times the speed of light. But more impressively, Jimmy's signal watch operates by emitting a high-frequency sound only Superman can hear. Which means Superman heard the signal in the vacuum of space 25 light years away. That is physically impossible. Except for Superman. Oh, <laughs> you aren't impossible? How about the time he lifted Spectre off the ground? A guy literally made up of eternity! 
No, not insane enough for you? Well then, how about the time Superman lifted a book of infinite pages? That's right, Superman lifted both eternity and infinity. Though he did have some help from Wonder Woman and Shazam. Hey Wiz, what's half of infinity? In infinity! Regardless, they have limits in their own strength. So while they were lifting a specific set part for each load, Superman was lifting everything else, which literally means everything else. Really, Wonder Woman and Shazam didn't even need to be there. Superman's held a black hole, survived an explosion equal to 50 supernovas, flew to the center of a red sun, which is like tanking millions of nukes rapid fire, and once easily absorbed enough solar energy to vaporize half a galaxy. And to put an end to the Wizards Magazine argument, here he is getting thrown from orbit into Earth with enough force to devastate the planet and cause nuclear winter. Oh look, he stood up moments later more pissed off than hurt. Oh, and by the way, none of this was pre-crisis. Believe us, we know none of this makes any logical sense. And hey, it's not our fault. These writers just keep making Superman the most impossibly OP guy ever. That's kind of what he's all about. Exactly. Superman isn't just a sketch on paper. He's an ideal. Superman and Goku are more than just characters. They inspire. They show us the best of what we can become. This is why people get so passionate about this debate. Goku's the epitome of a self-made man in spirit and personal goals. He inspires people to work hard to achieve dreams. To many, Goku is proof that there is no struggle that cannot be overcome. And the world of Dragon Ball fits this mold. Every obstacle Goku faces in Dragon Ball has a limit he can overtake. Even those called gods in his universe can be defeated and surpassed. And that is where Superman breaks this matchup. His world just doesn't fit the same mold. Superman is an all-powerful being who is only weak to alien radiation and supernatural magic. He is not meant to be relatable. He is not meant to lose. While Goku's story is one of a man trying to be the best warrior he can be, Superman's is the story of a god trying to live amongst men. It's not about if he loses a fight, but whether or not he's doing the right thing. That's why he stands for truth, justice, and freedom. That's why he doesn't wear a mask. That's why he's called the Superman. But hey, we know some of you out there have some questions, so let's knock them out of the park right now. Technically, if Goku could find a way to draw energy across multiverses, his spirit bomb could possibly achieve the kind of limitless power to match Superman. But not only would that take way too long to charge, providing Superman with plenty of time to kill him thousands of times over, the spirit bomb does not hurt anyone pure of heart like Superman. Gohan, you have to bounce it back. If you don't have any evil in you, you'll be okay. Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan was about on par with Golden Frieza. When asked about Golden Frieza's power level at a panel, Frieza's voice actor said that since Frieza was a nice guy, it's probably 100 quintillion. Which is a pun, because power levels are nothing more than a big joke. Superman has been beaten in battle before, when he was still learning. Saying Superman should lose because he lost to Doomsday is the equivalent of saying Goku should lose because he was one shot by Raditz. We are looking at these characters at their maximum potential, not from some random point in their timelines. Goku may have divine ki now, but it's still ki, not magic. Ki may be spiritual in nature, but it's still a natural source of living energy even Superman possesses. In fact, Dragon Ball emphasizes a clear difference between ki and magic. And if Goku did destroy the sun or the planet, he can't survive in the vacuum of space. Superman can and could always just fly to another yellow sun, or even a blue one, which boosts his powers even faster. Ultimately, Goku versus Superman comes down to a difference of limits and purpose. What happens when you pit a man with the power to break any limits against a being with no limits in the first place? Well, only one has limits to give at all. But that's exactly what makes him such a memorable character. Think about it, if you had a Goku that was as powerful as Superman, would you even want him? The winner is Superman. Fucking Superman. Next time on Death Battle. Hey 
everybody, I'm Chad, I play Boomstick. I'm Ben, I play Wiz. And thank you guys so much for watching the episode. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. We worked really hard on this one. Especially that guy over there, animator Torian. Hey, Torian, Torian. Torian. This is what he's like, like 24-7. This is all this man does is animate. Anyway, he works really hard. Hard for you guys. And we hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Wonderful animation by Torian. But next time, Knuckles is next. But who's he gonna be facing? You can find out by sticking to our social media at ScrewAttack on Twitter and Official SA on Facebook. Yep, so go like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.